Hi, in this two-part video series, I'd like to walk you through the process of using Datadog's log pattern matching to discover grok parsing rules and drive exclusion filters. During these two videos, we'll take a look at some .NET logs that we perhaps like to prevent being indexed, as they add very little value operationally, and ultimately reduce some of our log costs. In this first part, we'll introduce these logs, use pattern matching to identify suitable grok parsing rules, and then applying these rules within pipelines to ensure our logs are indexed effectively. This will allow us to extract some useful information and store this as metrics. In the second video, we'll then set up exclusion filters to prevent the logs from being indexed. So here in the Logs Explorer, we see all of the logs within our main index over the past 15 minutes. I'd like to focus on just our .NET logs, so I'll use the auto-suggest search bar to filter these logs. We now see that we have around 80,000 logs over 15 minutes. I can now go ahead and click the Patterns button in the top left hand corner. This will, on the fly, condense the 80,000 logs down into a much more consumable set of identified patterns. For this example today, I shall choose this particular pattern here. Hovering over the bar on the left hand side here, I can see that this pattern is taking up around 10% of our index for this search. Taking a look at the pattern, we can see that these logs may not provide us with a lot of operational value, and therefore excluding these will drop our costs for .NET logs by that 10%. Before we do that, however, we may realise that we'd like to keep an eye on the long-term trend of response time broken down by method, and have this graphed out as a metric over the full 15 months of retention that Datadog provides for metrics. Let's take a look at an individual log line here. Ah, here we see a problem. Whilst the date, message and status have been parsed out, the method and response times that we're after have not. So let's address this first. Closing out the pattern view, to the right here, we can see show parsing rule. Clicking this will automatically generate a grok parsing rule that we can use to help us correctly index these logs. Let's click copy here so that it is available for us to use within pipelines. I can now go ahead and create a new pipeline. Let it know what logs I'd like it to apply to, in this case our .NET logs, and give it a name. Once I've clicked save, I can go ahead and add a processor, and we'll find the grok parser is selected as default. As a side note, we now have access to a magic button, parse my logs. Because we've already defined that our .NET logs will apply to this pipeline, this magic button will suggest some logs from that search using patterns behind the scenes, and automatically create grok parsing rules for those samples, but I'll leave that as an item for you to experiment with. So for now, let's remove those samples and rules, and paste in our copied grok rule, and also give it a name. I'll also grab a sample log from that pattern to use as a validation of our rule here. Now this has brought us most of the way there, but let's make a couple of minor adjustments. First, let's give the response time a more friendly name. I'll also namespace it for easy reference. And here, turn this into a not space match with a name also. Great, now we have our method name and response time being parsed out nicely. Hit save. And now all logs matching this rule now have these items parsed out. Before we turn the response time into a metric, we have one final step to perform. Taking a recent log here, we can see our response time and method name. These need to be turned into a measure and facet accordingly, so let's go ahead and do that. First the response time, and now the method name. We are now ready to create our metric, so let's head over to the Generate Metrics screen. Clicking Add a Metric down here, we'll define our query, our .NET logs, and here we want to count our response time, and group by method name. In our example here, we only have one method name, but as we build out this environment, response times will be collected for each new method. Finally, let's name it and create the metric. In a few moments, we'll see our metric graphing out, and we can see that it is tagged by our method name. 
During this first part of our series, we've seen how using Datadog's log paths and matching has helped us identify where we can save costs and also suggest a grok pattern to make parsing of logs a really simple task. This has allowed us to create a metric from the response time that will be held for 15 months. In the next video, we'll see how we can now use our log pattern matching to set up an exclusion filter to reduce the cost of our .NET logs by 10%.